what is up everybody it is your boy slim aka mr different back with another video today we're going to continue my series of getting started with Ableton live i do appreciate all the support and the likes and the comments that people gave me with the previous video on just getting it set up you know i'm gonna continue with this um i know a lot of people aren't too happy about it because you know they're fl studio users but that's cool man like i said this video isn't for you anyway it's for the people who want to learn ableton live and who use ableton live and like i said i'm making videos for people who use ableton live and that's just that so i mean don't worry fs studio videos will not be obsolete i'll still be doing those but i said just for all my fs i'm all my ableton live users anyway so uh last video i showed you how to get started with it how i told you how to get set up how to you know set your drivers set your midi uh all that good stuff you know to get you up and running so you know you'll have everything now now i'm gonna do a general overview of the layout of um, Ableton Live and then the next video like I said we'll be getting into more stuff like adding trash recording aiming stuff you know what it, the stuff is like that and you know just like I said I want to give you a full experience and a full walkthrough and breakdown of this from beginning to end from you know getting set up to exporting your beat and all that good mess so let's go ahead and look at the general overview like I said when you start up Ableton Live this is the screen that you will be greeted with you have a MIDI and an audio track it looks like a little like a little mixer and all that um, and people look at this like what is this I don't understand understand this um this is the default setup how it set, uh, how it starts off um basically what this is this is basically the mixer right here this is the mixer window as you can see if you drag right here you can actually make it bigger and it looks more like a traditional mixer right there but if you want to see the alternate or the sequence or the arrangement uh window all you gotta do is hit the tab button and then there you go now you got your arranger or you can just click right up here we say like the vertical and horizontal lines and it'll switch right there but i like to use tab because you know shortcuts are always great and this is more of a traditional window except this will be on this side for most people you know it's you gotta get used to it but i like it like this it is what it is so what you see is the secrets window right here basically this is where you're going to be you know make building your song right here in this area you have a timeline which as you see normal timeline you have a you know loop area we can loop stuff you have your whatever track it is if it's midi audio or whatever you have the levels and all that stuff you know you see your can mute it by turning it off like this that mutes it show you what track is what where it's coming from just all kinds of stuff. i get more detail that but like i said this is a general overview and then, you know you got your numbers and what time the timestamps and all that and your master channel down there pretty cool so very simple there now you know let's start from the top and then work our way down to the bottom for this video so we're gonna start with the top as you see you got your file edit stuff like that so if you need to change stuff up or stuff like that you have that right up here um you can hide this little window this is basically like your i guess like the window in fl studio where you have you can pick all your um your um, samples and all that basically it's the same thing but that's what holds your effects and everything like that which is pretty cool so you got different categories which will be you know sounds so basically sounds you got you got drums instruments audio effects which are basically you know audio effects for you know the audio you put in there so your eqs your compressors you know they got glue compressor which is basically a bus compressor limiter multi-band all that good stuff right there you have midi effects so you have different stuff for midi which is really cool like arpeggiator chords you got effects racks you got pitch random scale velocity you got different midi effects too so that's really interesting and that can get you started which i like that feature which there are shortcuts at fs2 that does the same thing max for live is basically a i'm gonna get I'm, I'm learning that that's like i think that's like a, a way you can build your own vst and stuff like that able to like i'm not 100 sure i have seen it i'm actually planning on getting it so i'm gonna be working in that but i think that max for live is you have your plugins which is all your plugins so as you see i have my brain works my free plugins which are all the free stuff i'll be downloading you know for free all my native instrument stuff as you can see my complete ultimate um, then you have, you have your slate, my slate plugins, which is all my slate digital stuff, soft tube, my Steinberg, which is I think just regular VSTs, to be able to expand the T Pain effect, um, and just some other stuff like that. As you can see, I have you know my soft tube and all that on um, my 16 64 bit. I have a bunch of plugins, not as many as I used to have, and you know then my analog lab and K metering stuff like that, Omnisphere of course. You know, so that's what plugins are. So you know, like I said in, in a previous video, I showed you how to set up your plugin. Um, search so you can search all your plugins like I, said, I recommend you having them all in one folder that way it's easier for it to find because unfortunately you can't search multiple folders or like fl studio which you can but it's always good to have it in one dedicated folder or hard driver's place so you can find them all easily and you know pull them up that way then you have clips and samples and like i said just this is stuff that just comes with ableton live so i don't really worry about that the only thing i really focus on is the plugins the audio effects and the midi effects that's all i really use the instruments is basically like you know default instruments like you know the default stuff in fl studio 
so that's pretty much that right there and it's pretty cool you can also search in here which i really like so if you want to find a certain plugin you can search it right there and it brings it up which is very convenient if you don't want to search through stuff so i mean i like that feature i wish you know a lot of DAWs had that a lot of do but a lot of don't so that's pretty good right there next you have right down here which is packs um user stuff and stuff like that now what this is basically places is basically where you'll find like your samples and stuff like that now if you have like me i have a special place called patches in my fl studio um hard drive i don't call it a hard drive but a space where all my samples my one shots all my kits i made all that stuff is located what i did is i added that folder by just going here and finding it and then now it's right here so when i click here now i have all of my samples so you got see kush drums epic drums stuff i created cold in the winter midi loot all the stuff i've made and even my other stuff i go to new user now all those samples i had for years you know my john giano kiss uh two star stuff ultimate toolkit stuff i use on a daily basis metro boom and stuff you know just stuff i use on a daily basis i have all that right there so that's what that what this place is so if you want to find your patches or anything like that like your one shots your drums your snares and all that you just go to add folder click on that folder and boom it's right there and it's just like fl studio at that point and you can just drag as you can see if i go on the um epic drums and i go to boom kicks there it is right there you know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There you go, and delete, and delete. There you go, so easy. And that's what that is. So that's that little section right there. And also you can hide this window if you don't want it in your way, but I like to leave it open because that's just me. All right, so next we go to the top, which you have your basic control. So you have uh, your bars, which how many bars is gonna show right here. Pretty cool, I'm going left, uh, right to left, which is counterintuitive. Um, this is the metronome so if you need to hit your metronome on you know a lot of people like the metronome especially me when i'm recording as a counter you can have the count off if you need it um so it always defaults the count off so if you need to change your count off to like one or two bars so you need like that one two three then record you can do that that's what i like to do it helps me out you can show your bar your um bars as in ah, i click there we go you got your time signatures which basically tell you you know how it's set up i don't know what it's playing you stop you have your tempo nudge. You can kind of nudge the tempo left and right. You can kind of nudge the tempo, which is pretty cool. You have your global tempo, which you know, we know what tempo is. If you don't know what tempo is by now, then why are you even making music? <laughs> Just being real with you. You have your tap tempo, so if you need to tap some, so I need to be like, oh crap, wrong button. So we go boop, 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 boop. We need one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I need 200 beats per minute, you know. You can definitely do that and it will tap the tempo, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. 20 standard and then link which is link on off which triggers and turns off link enable button which shows many link to unlink devices and connections so basically it connects the other like it links up to external devices if you need to like i guess like samplers and drum machines stuff like that you can link it up together that way and it links up but i don't have none then which i might get a push or a machine i don't know i'm thinking about it don't know which one i want yet but i want one of them too but you know that's that Next, you have your regular transfer controls. You have your play, pause, record, as usual. Um, you have MIDI arranger overdub, so you can, you know, instead of, you know, overwriting your MIDI, you click this, and it'll overdub it, which means it will add additional MIDI notes to your thing. Just like in FL Studio, how you had a button to where it will, as you, you play, like, the low notes, and then you can go back and play the high notes. You just click that button on, and you can do that, which is pretty cool. It shows you your arrangement phase, so basically, I think this is where you're at on the signature so if you're you know tell you like bar 19 one you know just tell you where you are in the timeline and then you have follow which basically means it will follow your cursor as it goes on throughout which is pretty self-explanatory every daw has that and that's what it was same thing with here you have the timestamp you have your punch in switch so if you need to punch in if you're recording like vocals or you're recording like a guitar whatever you need to punch in a certain six uh, six punch in a certain section you can click that button and you can punch in and you know continue recording that way punching in is really good i might do a video on how to punch in and punch out because you know i do it a lot when i'm recording vocals and i think it's a great technique i'm gonna have more vocal videos coming up soon because i have a new series about vocals because it's gonna make you guys die but yeah and that's gonna be that right there so you know if you need to punch in punch out there you go right there Next, you have your loop switch, so you can turn on your loop and on and off. Boom, boom, boom. You need to loop something. That's how you turn it on and off. And this is your loop arrangement, so it will loop in between these two lines, which, you know, is pretty 
be convenient. So that's simple. And see, so we had the punch in switch again. You had two punch in switches. Um, and then it showed the loop, show you how long the loop length is as well. So, you know, that's just pretty cool right there. So this is gonna be a 10 bar loop right there, which is, you know, what it is. That's what that is. So pretty simple right there, nothing special. So far it's easy and really easy to use. Next, we come over here to these buttons over here. As you can see, we have the draw mode, which allow you to draw stuff, basically like drawing clips, automation, and MIDI. Uh, if you need to draw in MIDI notes, you can do that by doing like clicking that tool, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Then you have the computer keyboard, which is you know like FS Studio. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can use your computer um, keyboard layout to play out your notes as well, which is convenient for most people, especially people who own laptops like that. There you go. Then you have the key map mode, um, and basically that is the session slot of the mixer slash overdrive control display, the computer key, they are arranged to. So basically what it's saying is it just kind of, um, we'll click it maybe, yeah. Basically you can select what, you can select what the keys are gonna be messing with. So you can kind of make your own key mapping pretty much. So that means you can pretty much make your own shortcuts on um, whatever gets highlighted, you click it and you click a, nut, a button or whatever, and then that becomes that switch. So if you need to rearrange stuff to your liking, you can map your own keys and do stuff your way. But only stuff that is highlighted, as you see like the little orange, that's what you can uh, change, which is pretty cool. Then you have your MIDI map mode, which is basically if you have a MIDI controller that has knobs and stuff like that, or buttons, you can actually map your MIDI controls to that button. Very simple, you just click this, you click something, and then you move your MIDI knob or whatever, and then that becomes that knob or whatever. So that's pretty cool right there as well. If you need to, you know, switch stuff over, you got a bunch of buttons, you wanna utilize your buttons, because I mean, it's fa when you have hands-on knobs and faders and stuff like that, it do your, your, workflow does become a whole lot faster i've learned that so up to you guys um cpu load so I'll just tell you how much cpu load i'm at zero percent because we're not doing nothing so you know and then you have your hard disk uh overload so basically tell you your heart your your um running out of memory stuff like that so that's pretty self-explanatory there um as we can see we have uh, talked about this that's basically i'm gonna talk more about this when i get to like the adding midi and recording stuff like that i'll get more than that um then we have down here below is your effects rack. So basically this is where all your effects will be played out. One thing I like about this, if you're doing like, you know, mixes like that, all you gotta do is drag down here and you can start, you know, I'm just gonna drag a bunch of effects. It's all right there in front of you. And basically this is gonna, gonna hold all your effects. You can see them all right in front of you and you can touch them and go off and mess with them and all that good stuff. And it's just great. It's great to have the right there. And you can, like I said, it, it just, I like that fun. It's kind of like Studio One. Now Studio One has everything in one spot same right here um it's all in one spot so you don't have to go to multiple windows and even when you switch to your uh mixer window it still stays right there so that really helps when doing that so that's what that is that's just your arrange window while your effects go down here and your vsts on top of that so if i click a vst so if we go down here plugins now drag an analog lab i gotta put it before all this and then you know as you can see analog lab right there and i can actually you know bring it bring it up and bring it down as you can see and all my effects in front of it which is pretty i mean come on you, you can't say that's not a bad function just delete 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 so now in the mixer window same thing very simple and like i said people a lot of people can ask me does awitson has a mixer yes it does just hit tab and then you have your basic mixer control. You have all your effects. So your effects will be lined up right here if you need to add effects in there. And I think you can add more than this, I think. I'm not sure, I haven't really, I don't really put a whole lot of effects on my stuff, you know, but if you need a lot of effects, I think you can go more than what is given right there. I'm pretty sure you can. I'm gonna say if you have it on or off, monitoring, stuff like that. Let's say I'm going more detail about that when we get to the actual MIDI and audio recording part of the video. Um, and then also you can hide all these windows. You see a little triangle that allows you to hide any window you want to see. So you can actually hide it and, you know, make it look the way you want. Or only have the stuff that you want up at a time. Cause sometimes too much stuff does get distracting at some points. So you can start hiding stuff to, you know, to, you know, make your window just a little bit smaller. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the general overview of Ableton. Like I said, it's nothing special, nothing spectacular. Oh, right here listen function so if you have this on when you click a sample it will play it i forgot to mention that that's my fault for not mentioning that right there so if you 
have a sample you over here you're picking you can actually click over here and listen to it so you know exactly what it is before you just drag it in there um and that's just it that's pretty much the general overview of ableton you know the kind of space that it has you know what's going on and how to navigate through it you know like i said this is kind of a shorter video than my last one like i said because i'm doing it in parts so i don't want to just give you a ton of information in one long hour long video i want to break it up and then say people if you can watch it and watch what you need to watch instead of you know seeing a whole bunch of stuff so that's that right there hope you guys enjoy it always i appreciate all the ableton users out there who are liking this or people who just want to learn ableton and kind of understand and get a feel for it and see what it's about and see if it's even worth it because like i said it's not for everybody um it was definitely a switch change for me i kind of i'm starting to like it a lot more than I like uh, a, uh studio one and um FL Studio, but that's because it's working the way I want it to work, and it does the things I want to do, and I love it, and it works great with my, my hardware too, my outboard gear. So I like that. So yeah, that's just me in general. That's personally, it's not. I'm not forcing this on nobody. You do what you want to do, and I don't really care if you do switch or not. <laughs> so it what it is. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. Like always, you know who it is. It is your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different, not motivated by the money, but the like, comments, subscribe, and views. Like always, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. So guess what? Have a good one.